Neville Bamber was aged 61 and 6 foot 4. He'd been shot eight times. However, it is unclear in which order. There were injuries from bullets to his head, arms and chest. A blunt object, probably the butt of the rifle, caused other injuries to his face. Although a slender woman, Sheila could easily have overpowered and shot her father, which would have incapacitated him. The prosecution stated Sheila Caffell was not in a psychotic state, in which case, why did she not fight Jeremy to save the lives of her family and children? Tests confirmed Sheila had no sedatives in her body and the defence wounds on Neville Bamber's arms correspond with those on Sheila Caffell's arm. Jeremy had no wounds whatsoever on his body. Sheila was photographed on the floor next to her parents' bed in the master bedroom. She had two bullet wounds to her neck and the pathologist testified she would not have been killed outright after the first shot but could have stood up and walked around for a while. Light blue socks with spots of blood were found next to Sheila's body and it's possible Sheila was wearing them during the shooting. Also, high-resolution images of Sheila's feet show blood on the sole of Sheila's left foot. However, Essex police deliberately cut individual photographs from the strips, which remain undisclosed. Before the trial, the defence did not have access to photographs of the palms of Sheila's hands either, and the prosecution claimed Sheila's hands were clean. Recently developed high-resolution photographs now show that the front of Sheila's hands do have blood on them, on the right hand and also on the fingers. Sheila had long red painted nails which were not perfectly manicured but badly damaged. Part of Sheila's toenail polish was found on the floor in the kitchen below the mantel placing Sheila at the scene of the attack on Neville. This is verified by forensic expert Peter Southurst. When the rifle was fired, it gave off lead residue. There were swabs taken at the mortuary and sent to the lab, but these were rejected owing to contamination issues. The exhibit reference number was altered. And then the swabs were sent back by police and accepted by the lab. The test showed very low levels of lead and the prosecution insisted this proved there was not enough for someone who had fired 25 rounds. However, tests show that just by wiping your hands on a cloth, you can reduce lead levels considerably. It is also absurd to suggest that Sheila, the daughter of a farmer who grew up on a farm and went to shooting parties, did not know how to fire a weapon. Both Sheila's cousins, David Bofla and Anthony Pargeter, agreed with DCI Jones in a meeting that Sheila was capable of carrying out the killings. Bearing in mind that most shots were fired within a few inches to the targets, the furthest being four feet away, how could anyone be expected to miss? Tragically, history has shown us that women under certain circumstances can and do kill their children. Sheila on the night of 7th of August 1985 became one of them. There is absolutely no question that Sheila Caffell killed her family in a psychotic episode. She was a modern young woman who loved her children. However, as a paranoid schizophrenic, she had many delusions about her children and was frequently fearful that they might harm her. She told her psychologist she was afraid she would kill them. Case documents show that there was no support for Sheila. There were no meetings between herself, doctors, psychologists and her family in order to understand her illness. Sheila was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. This illness is chronic and should have been managed in the long term by medication and contact with a psychiatric nurse. Because of doctor-patient confidentiality, Neville, June and Jeremy, as well as social services, had no idea that Sheila had thoughts about harming herself or her children. But tragically, these thoughts were very real for Sheila. 
In 1981, Sheila met Freddie Imami, a mature 41-year-old, and a relationship developed between them. Freddie has described one of Sheila's psychotic episodes as follows. Sheila suddenly became hysterical, mumbling about the phone being bugged. She became like someone possessed, ranting and raving. She was striking herself and beating the wall with her fists. I tried to calm her, but she did not seem to hear me. I became extremely frightened, not only for her, but for myself. She kept talking about the devil and God and stated that God was sitting opposite her. Freddie went on to say, Sheila could not recognise anyone who came to the flat and believed everyone was trying to hurt or kill her. Colin Caffell, Sheila's husband, also described Sheila as having a quick temper. He was never made aware of the full extent of Sheila's illness. He was aware, however, of Sheila taking cocaine and cannabis, which could prolong and exacerbate the symptoms of mental illness. The safety of the twins became a concern when on the 4th of May 1983, Nicholas sustained a head injury, which was caused by him falling from a taxi. He had been in Sheila's care at the time and the police became involved, but no action was taken by social workers, despite their notes of the twins being neglected and having mysterious skulls and burns. It was Dr Ferguson who diagnosed Sheila with acute psychosis and later confirmed schizophrenia. He described her as a difficult patient to treat, but once on medication and mending well, became a completely different person. Haloperidol was prescribed for Sheila, which is an antipsychotic medication. She was also prescribed anaphronil, which is an antidepressant, because antipsychotic medication can cause the patient's mood to dip. On 11th of July 1985, one month before the tragedy, Sheila's medication was reduced. Because it was administered monthly by intravenous injections, the effectiveness of her last injection would have worn off by the 7th of August 1985, and her psychotic symptoms would have been poorly controlled. This also meant Sheila would have experienced no difficulties with coordination, and therefore no difficulty in using a gun.